So it's true that for the past maybe hundreds of years, human beings tried to associate the behavior with some something, a pattern that they see in the human body, maybe the shape of the head, maybe the shape of the eyes, uh, maybe the color of the skin and so forth. More recently, they were able to look deep down inside the human body. Maybe what makes us human beings is what we see inside our bodies. The shape of the brain that we can now see, the structure of the brain, some chemicals, some particular cells, some particular genes. But the truth is that despite looking with all kinds of complex machineries inside the human body, we cannot really associate any of these you know, shapes and forms with human behavior. Mainly what we see is that if the environment pushes human beings to become egocentric and competitive and uh, violent, then that's the outcome, you know. If we compete with each other, then we probably are going to be mean with each other, maybe violent at one point with each other. If you grow up in an environment where we are being taken care of, you know, and um, we have access to whatever we need and want, probably we are going to be better human beings. It's not that people are born like that or there's like a gene. It's uh, the way we're conditioned. It's the way we are built our society. I mean, if the only way for you to survive is to earn money, then you're gonna earn money no matter what. If you're conditioned in a situation that you need to kill someone or some animal or some person, and it's the only way for you to basically feed yourself or feed uh, your family, you will do it. You put any other person in such situation and will act accordingly. Even if you look at other beasts in this world, creatures that are not as intelligent, we say, as us, that uh, their only purpose seems and their only behavior apparently is to just go and hunt other creatures, you know, lions and hyenas and bears and so forth. Even if you look at those creatures that seem to have a fixed behavior, their behavior changes if you put them in different kind of environments. Hello! Ida, are you having a good time? Are you having a good time, boy? Idi! Idi, boy, kitty! You're so funny! You're so funny! So he's doing a typical hyena greeting there. Say hello, kitty, kitty, kitty! What's going on, kitty, kitty? Okay, so I don't know if you saw that, which is, for me, always so impressive about uh, the mental aptitude of these animals is she knows I have a treat in my hand but she won't just bite my hand she'll wait for me to open my hand and then she'll lick out the treat or, or gobble up the treat um, so it's really a phenomenal thing um, when this animal and we all know the power of a hyena's jaws and we know that if she wanted to she could just uh, bolt off uh, the hand. As far as I'm concerned, um, he uh, is just all in all a, a wonderful specimen. I'm having a good time, are you? Yes. Well, mwah, mwah, and mwah. We love a bobcat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The human environment, as you might expect, is very different from that of many other so-called wild species who just born, are born into this naked planet and have to face it. Trees and rivers, you know, mountains and storms, snow and waterfalls. All of these are the map that most creatures are faced with. But humans created their own world. We cut down the trees, we reshape the world, we reshape the climate, we reshape the rivers, we collect the snow, we collect the water, we take materials and put them together and create new materials. We create what is called as a society. With rules, with all kinds of statuses. And 
that's the kind of world that I was exposed to. Not as much trees and waterfalls, not as much as mountains and experiencing the rain and running away from predators. No, 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 no. I experienced the human world, doors and stores, you know. I experienced cars and bars, stuff like that. 